because it talks about the fact that they're going to see, uh, people are going to walk by, and if you see something that looks out of place, uh, don't touch it, let the professionals come and touch it. That sounds to me like some kind of a, a nuclear bomb or something. So you're not going to, you know, want to go there. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's going to be something like that. And so um, then God spoke to Noah saying, go out, go out of the ark. Now we talked about this. You and, look at what New King James says. Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that's with you, birds and cattle, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird and whatever creeps on the earth according to their families went out of the ark. Okay, we talked about the fact... Um, um, this is Genesis 9, and I'm not there yet, but I do want to, I, I got to share this with you. This is really awesome. I studied this this week. What was the curse that God, I mean, that Noah placed on, um, uh, he placed it on Canaan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, do you know who the Canaanites gave birth to? <coughs> nope. Canaanites gave birth to the Hivites. And the, well, not all of them. I mean, the Hivites. This is very, very interesting because now you'll get, you'll tie something together. Okay. The Hivites gave birth to the Gibeonites. Do you know who the Gibeonites were in Joshua nine? The ones that they uh, protected because they didn't ask the Lord. That's right. Uh -huh. The ones that that fooled them mm -hmm. and said, "We've come from a long distance." Mm -hmm. And what did they make them? That's right. So the prophecy was fulfilled. See, Ham and Canaan, and um, he gave birth to the Hivites, and he gave birth to the Gibeonites. And so the prophecy was fulfilled that they actually served his brothers. I like it when the Bible comes together like that. But we'll talk about it next week because I'll show you all the connections. Um, so the only thing I wanted to bring out again was I find this interesting that the New King James, the New American Standard Version, the American Standard Version, Darby, um, and other versions, they say, go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons. And then it says down here, it says Noah went out and his sons and his wife. So it seems to me like God, I mean, nothing's in the Bible by chance. It seems to me like God is showing how Noah had gotten this whole mess because the wife was supposed to cover him. Come into the ark, Genesis 7, 1 says, right? Remember, it says, come into the ark, come what does Jesus say? Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, overburdened, and I will cause you to Noah. Remember? Noah means rest. I will cause you to rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Then God tells Noah to, once he's in the ark and it's time to go, he says, go. And so what, did he, what does Jesus say? Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So come and go. Um, and Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean fowl bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Notice that Noah was not commanded to worship God. He didn't command him to. He didn't say, worship me. Now there are places in the Bible, like Joshua 1. He tells him to take his shoes off and bow. Worship me. Abraham was given one thing to believe God. One major thing. Do you remember what it was? What caused Noah, I mean, what caused Abraham to be considered righteous? There's one act. When he offered up his son, that's when righteousness was imputed to him. Noah was given one thing. What was that thing? Build the ark. Trust me get on the ark and so it's not like God said okay do A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then you'll be considered righteous he only caused them to, to do this one thing really when you proved yourself in mythology and Roman and, and Greek and all that kind of those kind of times you proved yourself you had to do great feats great acts remember in the story of Naaman um, the Assyrian uh, the Syrian that came and he was a leper and Elijah didn't even come to him. He came from a great distance away. And he didn't even come to him. He sent a servant out there and said, um, 
go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan. And the guy goes, how dare he? I expected him to come and wave his hands over me <laughs> and do some kind of special little thing, and then I'd be healed. How dare he not even show up? 